did at one point in my life, but that is long gone. And, uh, and now forget about it, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, she, she's a freshman in college, so. So yeah, so she she was been through calculus and and uh, I don't know what she's doing per se. I don't know if she has any math classes per se now, but yeah, it's like I kind of remember a, I maybe remember the most basic things about calculus, but like not being able. Um, I did help her with a physics problem last year. I was happy about that. All right. Um, to. All right, discussion we had before class again was a little bit about how you could show for, uh, for the one lab, how you could show uh, an image, and probably the simplest way to do it would be to put a, a, a details view on there that just had the one field, which is what you did, yeah, and, and, and that's the way to do it. You, you probably could do it also, you, you could do it any number of ways. You could, um, uh, and, and maybe as, as time goes on and we, we, we look at, um, doing some of these things by hand, we'll explore how to do that. You could actually get that image, th that text from there, and construct either a label that had that in there. You could, you could do that. Or you could, uh, probably the better thing to do would be to create an image control and set the properties of the image control. The whole idea is, is you know, I mean, they've given you these components for uh, a, a reason to, to help you do things. Uh, and, and as a general rule, you want to sort of go with the flow. Uh, you you want to you want to do and you want to um, take the path of least. Re I don't even want to necessarily say that, but but you want to you want to work with the components as opposed to working against the components. So if there's a component to do it. There's a good chance that that probably is a better way to do it. And again, we'll look at this as we get into custom coding, probably either uh, end of day today or start a class uh, next time. Um, all right. My, if my memory serves, we hadn't talked about um, insertions, or we didn't talk too much about insertions. Uh, specifically, we didn't talk about what was goofy about the the way that um, our framework by default handled insertions. So that's what I want to do today. All right, for the first part. Second part of class, we might actually do insertions through custom coding, all right? And that might get a little bit into um, what you were referring to. Definitely when we talk about updates, um, we'll cover that. All right, so. If we can remember the issue that we ran into with, with insertions, the issue was that ins insertions, when we do them, we kind of have to, I won't say jump through hoops, but we kind of have to go through um, a couple steps to get to where we can insert stuff. In other words, <coughs> let me go in and run this. The way the code is written now, if we go and run this, we would have to first bring up an existing student and then go in and click add and then we would be able to add a student. Well, that's very awkward, all right? What I would like to have instead is I would like to have a link that I could just click on and go right into add mode for the student without having to pull up an existing student and then clicking add. I mean, that's a much, much better, more, more logical way to do it. Um, I'll show you how it is now and I'll show you how we would like to do it and we'll see what happens when we try to do it that way.
Unfortunately, we'll see that later tonight after everyone has, has left for the evening. All right, so if we want to go and add a student, we have to click and pull up an existing student. We have to click New, and then we can go fill that in. And click Insert. All right, then when we do that, it brings up that student that we brought up the first time. And only if we go back to our page, we can see, yeah, that student indeed made it in. So that's pretty awkward, all right? So what we want to do is we want to make it so that um, when they go in to uh, add mode, it can go directly in add mode without having to pull up a, a, another student first. So let's go in. And let's start by putting a link to that page in. All right. So I'm going to go on uh, on here on my grid view, and I'm going to go over and I'm going to drag a link all right. And the text of the link is going to be, oops, to add student. And the URL is going to be student MNT DET. All right, it's going to be that second page, the page with the details view. Now I'm going to show you what happens and I want you to tell me why this happened. All right? You know already that that's not a good sign, right? If it works, we don't have to justify what happened. But we'll go in here. All right? And if I click my link to add student and I go to that details page, watch what happens. I get a blank page. All right. Now remember, the details page that we have is the one that we got to before by clicking detail. That brings up a person and we can click new. But when we click the add link and get to that, it's the same URL, so right URL. However, we get a blank page. We don't get anything. We don't we're not able to go in and add someone. What's going on here? Why do we get that blank page? Why wouldn't I have connection to the database? I mean, we showed already that it's connected to the database, right? Because if they if we click on a person, it pulls them up. So, I, you know, we're going to the same URL, so I don't see why it wouldn't have connection in this case when I had connection before. Maybe maybe your choice of the word connection isn't as precise as it should be. Does anyone want to add to that answer? Is it not running the query? Why wouldn't it run the query? Repeat that, please. Right. Yeah, we have the SQL data source on the query. It has oh, yeah. a there and it has a select. But it's okay. Okay, so we do have the query, and we we've seen how we've been pulling students up and editing them and updating them and all that. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah you're definitely right. Something to do with the link. Yeah. Yeah. It gets to the page load event. We don't even have code in the page load event, but but it did get to the page load event. 
Ah, there we go. We don't. We never pass it a value. In other words, if you look, uh, this is sort of like a the sleight of hand. You know, not not you know not full disclosure here. It's not really the same URL, right? Because if we go into edit mode for this student, notice what the URL says: student M N T D E T A S P X I D equals three. And then we were also, because student asked a question, passing the state, even though we're not really using it. But the most, the important part is, when we go to it in edit mode, when we go to it from the, from the detail view to pull up someone to edit, our URL looks like this. All right. When we go in this way, our URL looks like that. So it's not the same URL. Whoops. DET. It's not the same URL. All right. It's missing the ID. So, what should that ID be if we want to add someone? What's the ID of the person that we're going to add? Exactly. We don't know. All right. There isn't an ID yet. There is not an ID yet. So, it's reasonable to say that we want to not pass an ID if we want to go into add mode. What's not reasonable or what's not working here is that, grid, that, that details view still insists on being in edit mode regardless of whether or not we pass it an ID or not. Okay? Now, let's look a little closer at the details view. Let's look a little closer at the details view. And if we look at the details view, can't see it over here, but one of the properties of that details view is A default mode, all right. Default mode, and there's actually three um, values for that, right? I think there's three. Yeah, read only, edit, and insert. All right. We go into read only mode. What does that mean? That means that it comes up just as labels. And you have to either click, edit, or delete, or insert to be able to do anything on it. That's the default mode, and that's what we do. Let's, let's, let's take a look at that. This is read-only mode. All right. Can't edit that because they're labels. And we have the options of edit, detail, and new. All right. If we're talking in terms of templates, that is the, the item view of that template. Now, we could instead automatically go into edit mode. All right? And we'll see what the difference in that is. The difference in that is it will not, the page will not pop up with everything in labels. It will pop up as though we already clicked the link to edit. In other words, everything will be in a text box and we can go and edit and change it. So, go and run this. Now remember the, the, the details view on the next page is set to be in edit mode. So if I click that, look, I'm all ready to edit it. I didn't have to go through that extra step because I put it by default into that mode. All right. And I can go and do that, and I can update or cancel. All right. Now, I can't insert anymore because I'm in edit mode. That's sort of the downside of this. Let's look at the last option. The last option, as you can probably guess, is that we go directly into insert mode. All right. And so if we go and run this, if we go to that page, we will open up automatically in insert mode. 
where we have a blank form that we can go fill in. Now watch this. Now if I go in here and click Add Student, it's not going into edit, it's not going into edit mode or read only mode, it's going into insert mode. So this works. All right. Now here's the dilemma, <laughs> right? Which mode do we make the mode for this? All right. It depends on how we get to that page, right? If we get to the page through this link, that's just fine. That's exactly what we want to do. All right. If we get to the page through this link, well, that's not so good. We want it to be this. We want it to be in either edit or read only. We'll say read only. All right. So if they get to it this way, we want it to be in read only mode where it pulls up everything in label. So we have, we want this to be in two different modes depending on how we got there. How do you suppose we're going to solve that dilemma? What can we do? Pardon me? Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Remember that there's, there's, there's a couple of ways that we can set the parameters of uh, any of these components, the, the, the properties of any of these components. One way that we can set them is through the, the, the IDE when we build it. In other words, I can through, my, through the IDE, when I create that details view, I can say, yep, I want it to be in read-only mode. All right? But I can also code it. All right? I can also code it to be in a different mode if that's what I want to do. All right? If that's what I want to do. So, how do I tell what mode I want to be in? How do I tell, how do I distinguish between which of the two modes I want to be in? Read only mode or insert mode? Pardon me? Well, I don't always want to be in insert, right? When do I want to be in insert mode? When do I want to be in read-only mode? I want to be in insert mode when I'm adding a brand new one. I want to be in read-only mode when I'm editing an existing one, right? How can I differentiate in my code with what I want to do? How can I differentiate in my code whether I want to be in read-only or insert mode? Okay. If I'm using the link, I want to be in insert mode. Well, if I'm using the other link, I want to be in edit mode. What's the difference between those two links that distinguishes if I want to be in edit or insert mode? Whether you're passing the ID. Exactly, whether there's something that's on the ID or not. So, what I want to do here is I want to do one of two things. I'm going to leave the... Um, I'm going to leave the uh, default mode to read-only mode. But I'm going to look to see if there's anything on the query string. And if there is something on the query string, I will stay in read-only mode. If there is nothing on the query string, then I will move into insert mode. All right? I'll, I'll go and change that. So my page is going to be smart enough to know how you got there. All right? If you got there just by clicking the link that is not part of the grid view, you're not passing an ID, you're not wanting to edit a specific value, you're wanting to insert a new one, it will put you in insert mode. If, however, you've gotten to it by clicking on one of those links and you've passed it an ID that you want to edit, potentially, or delete, then it will stay in read-only mode. So, we'll go in and what I'll do is this. In this page, I will go to the code behind. I'll go to the code behind, and I will put 
as part of the pages load event, this is where I'm going to put my code, right? As soon as the page loads, I'm going to look and determine what mode I want the page to be in. All right? Now, how do I find out if there's something on the query string? There's two objects, remember, that we have in pretty much any sort of server-side coding. We have the request and the response object. Where does the query string live? Part of the request or part of the response? All right. It's coming from the browser to the server, so it's part of the request object. All right. So, what I can do is I can do something like this, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. I'm going to show you my favorite way, but you might see other people code it a slightly different way. I'm going to take the length after I trim request query string ID. If that equals to zero, then I'm going to do something. Let's make sure we understand what that means. Request query string ID is pulling the field off of the query string that's called ID. Which, if I remember right, that's what we're passing the ID in, is in a field called ID, a query string field called ID. I'm trimming it. All I'm doing there is I'm getting rid of leading and trailing spaces. Um, that shouldn't be a factor here because I'm pulling the value from the primary key of a database field, but old habits die hard. I, I always do this before I look to, if I look to see if something is empty, I always look to see if there are leading or trailing spaces, just on the odd chance that there's some garbage in the field. And then I take the length of it. That's what trim does, by the way, is it gets rid of leading and trailing spaces. So if I had a, a, a value, that was like this, if x equals space space Mike Zeller's space space, if I said z equals trim x, then z would equal, get rid of the leading and trailing spaces, z would equal Mike space Zeller's. That's just prohibiting if there's a something on the query string that was just like all blanks. All right, just some goofy uh, uh, occurrence like that. So, if, it is, if, the, if the length after I trim the query string field called ID is zero, what mode do I want to be in? I want to be in insert mode. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to say details view one dot and again, what's the name of the property? The exact same name it was in the previous page, right? This is the same property. We're just setting it programmatically through our code instead of setting it through the IDE. So it was something like default mode equals, and then we have our choices, and we will pick that we want it to be insert mode. So now we should be in, in good shape for this. All right? So let's run it and verify that everything works the way we want it to. If I go to detail, it brings that up. That's a good sign. If I go and add, I get an empty page, which is just fine. So now I have this one page that acts differently depending on how you got there. Because the code is smart enough to look at how you got there, that is, is there something on the query string for ID or not, and set the mode based on that. Now, the one thing I don't like is, now that we have a, a good way to get into add mode, I don't like the fact that we could go and click new here. I'm going to get rid of that. All right? All right, let's see how I can do that. There's my details view. And hmm, how do I get rid of that? 
I want to get rid of the new. I could probably go into edit columns or edit fields. And I could click on that command field. Notice it just says command field. There isn't like a field for edit, delete, new. There's just command field. If I got rid of that, that would be getting rid of all of them. Right? So how do you suppose I can get rid of just the new? How do you suppose I can make this not have the default behavior that it has, but instead have some behavior that I have more control of. That is, to only give the option to edit or delete and not give the new option when you're in read-only mode. Well, go ahead. Pardon me? But I want to be able to insert sometimes. I just don't want the option to insert if I'm in read-only mode. That's, that's, that's a different thing. Well, how do we make anything behave differently in a grid view or details view um, than, than the default behavior? How did we, for example, if you remember last week, we had uh, the default is not to have any validation, yet we added validation. The default was to be text boxes, yet we made it a drop down. How do we make anything act uh, different. Yeah, we make it into a template. All right. So we can make this column into a template field, and then we can go in and edit that template, and we can make it look any way we want to. So I could go in here, and I can edit fields. I can pick that field, the command field, and say convert into a template field. So I convert it. Now I can go in and edit the templates. And notice, those are my three views. If I'm in read-only mode, I get the item template, which shows currently edit, new, and delete. If I'm in edit item, in other words, I've clicked at it, I get update and cancel, which is fine. If I'm in insert mode, I get insert and cancel, which is fine. So I can just go in, get rid of that, and I've effectively gotten rid of the um, ability in read-only mode to go into insert mode. Therefore, if I bring up a, an existing record, I don't have the option to insert a new one, which kind of makes sense to me. I kind of wouldn't want to do that anyhow. All right? So now we'll go in. And we'll show how that acts. So now if we go over to details, we can only edit and delete. All right. And if we go and we get to it this way, I can go and add a student. I can insert or cancel. All right. Now, again, guess what? We can go and we can try to insert without entering some of these fields in, some of which are probably required. And of course, we get giant, big, ugly errors. So what are we going to do to fix this? We're going to do the same thing that we did in the other example. We're going to go in and we're going to convert some of these fields into template fields. And then we're going to add our validation. We're going to convert some of them to template fields and change it from a text box to a drop down. All right. So we're going to do all the things that we did in that previous example. And remember, in that previous example, I may have only done one or two things, but you would do all of them that you would need to, need to do. In addition, know that when you create a details view like this, you know, don't stick with the names from the database unless they're very descriptive. You know, SMI, we know that means student's middle initial, but anyone else coming to this page is liable to be confused with what that means. All right, so you would want to go in and edit the column name so it shows up correctly. Now, I do want to show something. Let's say I go in and add a student and insert 
Is that what you would like to have happen? No. What would you like to have happen? Could probably go back to the grid and yeah, and, and go back to the grid and show that that person's been added. Okay? So, let's look at how to do that. All right? Now what I can do is in the code behind I can go in to that details view and look for the item inserted event. Remember there's always for each of the three big operations insert, update, and delete, there is two, there are two events, a uh, present tense that ends in ing and a past tense that ends in ed. Um, the present tense means that it's going on now, it hasn't happened yet, it's about to happen. The past tense that ends in ed means that the operation has already happened. So the item inserted event um, is uh, going to occur after the insert has been attempted and it either succeeds or fails. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is look to see if there's any errors. All right. So I'm going to look and say if not e dot exception is nothing. What do I want to do? I want to do something like, um, you know, put in a label insert failed and then tell the framework that I've covered this error. Otherwise, what do I want to do? I want to send the client to back to that grid page. All right. Now, this is communication coming from the server to the client. So will it be the request or the response object? It'll be the response object. So response dot redirect equals, and I can specify the page that I want to go into. In that case, it's studentmnt.aspx. Let me go in and just put that label here so that we have some place to put our error message. All right. And now we'll run it. my mistake. There you go. So now if I go into insert mode, go to add student, and I try to insert, it'll give me a user-friendly message saying it failed. If I go in and add someone and insert, it goes in and shows me the list to indicate that they've indeed been added. All right. Questions about any of this? So, that's one way of doing inserts, updates, and deletes. Now, I haven't gone in and done, like, 
everything for any example, right? Uh, there's, there's still validation that needs to be done. There's still error checking that needs to be done. But I think I've done an example of everything that you would want to do or, or most everything you'd want to do to customize the details view and grid view. I've changed it from a text box to a drop down. I've put validation in there. I've redirected after the, the, uh, the, the successful um, and I've put error checking code in there. All right. No, that, that's using those controls. Yes. One question. Mm -hmm. On the code behind, mm -hmm. when you check the query strength, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have an else there because of the state. Right. You don't have the state for the next time that would execute. Say they inserted one and then inserted a record. Right. And then they went in and edited the record. Okay. The reason I don't have an else is because oops, is because already the default for this is read only mode. All right? So I don't need an else because by default this component is set to read-only mode. It's only if I encounter that condition where there's nothing on the query string that I want to go into insert mode. So if they, want to, if they went in and inserted something, they're going to call that page, there's going to be nothing on the query string, and it's going to set the mode for that particular page, for that particular instance of that page, it's going to set it to insert. I do my insert, it's worked successfully. I go back to the grid. I click the link again. It's calling up another page. It recreates that grid view control with a default of read only. It looks, there is something on the query string. Therefore, it doesn't execute this if statement and it leaves it as, as read only. Good, really good question. All right. Now, we're going to look at what if we want to write our own code. Well, when do you want to write, write your own code? Well, you want to write your own code, as was mentioned earlier, if you want more grief in your life, right? If you want more hardship and difficulty, you write your own code. But that, you know, that's not the only reason. Um, sometimes, for example, if you're doing just a very simple activity, um, those objects might, might be too resource intensive. You know, they, they may you know, th th there's a lot of, of sort of wasted effort if all you're doing is something very, very simple. All right? So you might want to do it for that reason. Or maybe your insert is such that you're pulling properties for that insert from other places. All right? Let's say I want to go to my Netflix queue and I want to add a movie to my Netflix queue. I've logged on. All right? It remembers who I am somehow. All right? The code remembers who I am somehow. I go look at a movie that I want to watch and I click add to the queue. Do I get a form that I have to fill in and type in the name of the movie and type in my name and all that? No. It automatically goes and adds it. Why? Because it's getting some of that information from other places. It's getting who I am from a session variable, which we'll, which we'll talk about uh, at some point. And it's getting the um, movie ID maybe from the URL, maybe on the query string is a movie ID. So if your data isn't all coming from a form that you're entering, but your data comes from other places, and maybe you enter in a few fields, like in Netflix, I think you can enter a priority or something, all right, um, then it might be harder to take these custom components and sort of twist them to get them the way that you, uh, to, to behave the way you want to behave. That's always a dilemma, right? Is that when you use a, co a set of, of components like this, when you use a framework, frameworks typically work great for the sort of things that they were designed for, all right? And in the case of .NET, through the use of template columns, you can stretch that a little bit to, to get a little bit different behavior without too much grief on yourself, all right? However, there's always a certain point where there's something that you want to do that's far enough from the way that the, that the framework works 
that you have to make the call. Do I try to shoehorn my situation into the framework or do I say, well, I'm not going to use a framework this time. I'm going to custom code the solution and then I will write my own form, for example. Um, I can't give any sort of absolute guidelines on, on when it's best to do it. Um, you know, you have to look at every situation individually and, and, and know the framework and understand the capabilities of the framework. But I will tell you, every framework that I have ever worked on, there's a point where you throw up your arms and say, you know what, I'm just going to do this myself. I'll do it better, I'll do it more efficiently, and I won't tweak the framework. Now again, that's really a judgment call to know when to do that versus when to stick with the framework, right? Because if you remember at the beginning of the class, we spent uh, a period of time, you know, really talking up frameworks. Why frameworks are a good thing. That code's been tested. That code uh, is standardized. You know, there's a lot of good things about frameworks. But again, a framework is just that, a starting point for you to base a project off of. And there will always be times when your needs are far enough away from what the framework provides that instead of trying to stretch the framework to doing that, it's better just to create your own solution. So it's good to know a couple different ways to do it so you can make that call. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what if I wanted to do an insert, all right, making my own form. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is this. Just in the interest of time, I'm going to do a very simple table in this exercise. I'm going to do the faculty rank table. The faculty rank table only has two columns in it. That makes it pretty easy to do. We're going to start small and, 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 and we'll, we'll go from there. But for my first example of doing this custom, I'm going to do the faculty rank table. Faculty rank table has an F rank field and an F rank desk field. A faculty rank and a faculty rank description field. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off uh, making a list. Now in this case, the list I'm going to use my good old grid view for, all right? Because the, the list, there's nothing particularly um, custom about the list. So I'll go in and I will make a page called faculty rank list. And I will go in and I will put a SQL data source. We should be all old pros at this by now. faculty rank table, and I want to order by faculty rank description, okay. Then I'll put my grid view here, and I will choose my data source, and I should be good to go, all right. I'm going to set this as a start page now. And I think you trust me enough to know that, that that code will work. We'll see it work in a minute. I'm now going to put a link to faculty rank um, maintenance, MNT. And it's going to start out just being an ad uh, page, but we can change it to also do later on updates and deletes. All right, so I'll go here and the text I will make for this will be MNT 
Add new rank. And the URL will be faculty rank mnt.aspx. All right. So let's go and make that now. And we know what this page is going to look like, right? We can specify the form. We're not going to use a details grid or a grid view. We're going to custom code this ourselves. So we're going to need a label that will say code um, a text box to enter the code. And we'll call that text code. I'll put in a label for the description. And then I will have a text box for the description. And we'll call it txt text. And again, as I said before, I have not gone in and given a, a, a distinct ID to the labels because um, who cares about those, all right? We're not going to do any programming with them. They're just labels. They're there. And I probably won't want to do anything dynamic with them. Um, I guess it wouldn't hurt to give them a name, but if I don't think I'm going to program something, I will go in and um, simply not bother giving it uh, a descriptive name. Now, that might be a bad habit because I might at some point want to program those. For example, if there's a validation error, I might want to set the style different or whatever. But we'll take that shortcut today. The last thing I want to do is I want to put a button to add. Now, from an appearance wise, we're good to go. We're in good shape. The only thing is, is it doesn't do anything, right? We haven't written any code behind. And because we're not using any of the .NET components, there's no be default behavior here, right? So it's not like going to know what it means when we say insert or anything like that, unlike the grid view, all right? So now if I go to this page, yeah, sure, I can get that. And I can type something in. And I can click insert and absolutely nothing happens. Because again, that's not part of the framework. Um, this isn't like the grid view or the details view where it's part of the framework. All right. Um, and we haven't written any code behind to do that. So we would want to put validation on here, of course. I'm going to skip that part because I think we know how to do that. And I'm going to get to uh, writing the code um, to do that. Now, the code we're going to write, we're going to create very similarly the, um, how do I want to say this? We're going to create in the same way all the objects that we have when we use the built-in components. Uh, that is, we're going to create our own SQL data source and we're going to populate that SQL data source with, a, with an insert statement. And we're going to do all the things that we did through the wizards and all that, except we're going to do it through our code. And the one exception is, is we're not then going to tie it to a details view or a grid view. We're going to get the values from our different text boxes. So, I'm going to go into the code behind for this guy on the button click event. And I'm going to check if is valid, which is, again, is always a good idea to do. If, the, if the, the, the user has client-side validation enabled, 
then this code will never be hit uh, unless it is valid. All right. However, if they have JavaScript disabled, this will prevent um, the code from trying to do an insert if there's been validation errors. All right. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to create our SQL data source. Instead of through the, the GUI and dragging things around, I'm actually going to code it. And I'm going to say dim objds as new SQL data source. All right. So that's analogous to what we do when we drag something over on the page. We've created our SQL data source object. Now, I'm going to, I have to tell that data source what database to connect to. Remember, an application could potentially be hitting up against a couple different databases. That, that wouldn't be unheard of. Typically, you know, usually you think of a single database, but it's certainly possible that it could be hitting a couple different databases. So I have to tell this data source which database to connect to. So I do that with two commands. objds dot provider name equals configuration manager dot connection strings and what are we going to put there? We're going to put the name of our connection string in the web config file, the one that we've been using all along. Make it so it all fits. Almost all. OBJDS, this our data source, the provider name, we're going to pull from the configuration manager. The configuration manager is simply a class that allows us to access the web config file. All right. It's looking in that web config file under connection strings for this connection string, the one that we've defined and we've always been using. And I want to grab the provider name from it. I need to do that for a second parameter, and that is the connection string. If we look at that web config file, notice that associated with this connection string, there is a connection string and there is a provider name. All right. This is the information that this control needs to hook this data source to um, the database that we're interested in doing. Now, I'm going to specify my insert command. objds dot insert command equals, well, what would it be? Insert into f rank. All right, that's how an insert statement starts, insert into the name of the table. We then specify the columns we want to insert into. What are the columns that we want to insert into? F rank, F rank DESC. What are the values that we want to give it? Well, 
we'll get them a runtime, right? And how do we represent that as a parameter that's going to be filled in at runtime? With a question mark. All right. So, that's our insert command. This is very similar to what if we would have done it through the GUI. We'd do just about the same thing, or we might let it generate it or whatever. But again, it, this is our insert command. We want to insert into that table the faculty rank table. We want to insert the faculty rank and the faculty rank description. What are the values? Well, the values are going to be determined at runtime. The values are going to come from our GUI in this particular case. All right. Now, what do I have to do now? Well, anytime we have one of those parameters that's going to be available at runtime, we have to go in and specify where we're going to get that parameter from. All right? So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to say objds dot insert parameters add faculty rank parameter, again that corresponds to the first parameter on the list, it's going to come from what? It's going to come from the value of text box, what do I call that text box? Text code. The other one is going to come from Frank Desk, and the name of the text box is TXT Description. I don't like the fact that I've given my t two text boxes different prefixes, so I will go in and change one of them. Let's go in and change this guy to TXT code. Again, the specifics of the standards or the conventions that you use are, are less important than the fact that you use some sort of convention or standard. So if I'm going to call all my text boxes starting with TXT, or text, it doesn't matter, but pick one. <laughs> do one or the other, don't do both. All right. So what have I done now? I've gone in and I've essentially added, or I've told this data source where to get the values that correspond to these two question marks. Right? Obviously we can't hard code the values in. We don't want to insert the same faculty rank over and over and over again. So those values are going to be determined at runtime. How are they going to be determined at runtime? Where uh, the user puts in the text box the values that they want. So now what we're doing is we're associating this parameter with that text box and this parameter with that text box. So now we should be good to go. So all we have to do is go ahead and execute that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say obj ds dot insert and when I'm done I want to redirect to the list. All right, so let's look at this. Let's go in here. Add a new rank. Code will make PE description Professor Emeritus. Click insert. And there they are. All right. Now, what happens if, if we do this? We try to add another PE. 
course we get the boom, big ugly air, right? Because we have a duplicate key. All right? And we haven't handled it anyway. So it's just going to give us a big ugly error. Like that. All right? And it tells us that there's duplicate keys. Now, you know right off the bat that this isn't a good idea, right? Anytime you see big ugly errors like this, you know that we should handle it gracefully. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put our air trapping code. How did we handle this with the details view and grid view? Well, we had the item inserted, item updated, item deleted event where we could look to see if there's an exception. If there was an exception, we can code to do something, set some labels or whatever, and, uh, and handle the exception. Here, because we've written a code that does this, this is where we can actually wrap this code in a try-catch block. So we can try to execute that code and we can catch what en whatever exceptions occur. All right, next time what we will do is we will incorporate the try-catch block into this. Um, I don't think I've talked at all, or if I have at all, very much about the try-catch block. So we'll talk about the try-catch block and we'll show how to um, show how to create it, and uh, we'll add it to this. Our other things to do then will be to go and do a, a, an update and a delete, a delete like this, the same way. All right? And that way you'll have that tool in your arsenal too. So if you want to do it one way, you can do it one way. If you want to do it the other way. And we then might even be able to go and take and make a label into an image. All right? Or make, uh, use an image field uh, as well. So. That will be what we will look at next time. All right, we'll see you over in lab then.